The Small Business Show, episode 224 for Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019. Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co. You know who we are. We're by, for, and about small business. Sponsors for the show this episode include textexpander.com slash podcast and thealternativeboard.com slash SBS. We will talk about both of those in more detail shortly here. But first, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean, and I'm always impressed at how you can get the drums going and I can get that guitar riff to end at the exact same time. Every awesome. single time. That's because we're <laughs> professionals, man. That's, yeah, why. that's, it. that's, that's it. it. That's it. I really wish I could play the guitar, that, but, I, but I don't have the commitment uh, to uh, to make it happen. You it, know? It, do you, I, I will ask you this question. It's, it probably yes. will get us into something business-wise, but do you yeah, play, probably. <laughs> do you, have you ever learned a musical instrument? So when I was younger, but I'm a left-handed guitarist. Okay. And because I write left-handed, but, and I sure. did play, but I did not play well and uh, quickly changed, moved my, you know, focus to other things. Got it. So, okay. Uh, well, I always yeah, say yeah, yeah. It, it, it's often said, and I agree with this, that the second instrument is way easier than the first. Oh, I could imagine. Yeah. Because you, yeah. you know what it's like, you know what it feels like to play an instrument like that. that that's yes. Yes. part of it, but also just not well. <laughs> right. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah true. But also, you know, our brains change, right? Like when we're yeah. young, we're really good at memorizing things. Yeah, yeah. And as we get older, we get worse at that. But what True. we get better at is seeing the big picture of things. And thankfully for those of us that are getting older, which if we accept time as uh, a, a, a uh, as a as more than just an abstract, then that would be most of us. Uh, yeah. We have these devices that are good right. memories. They're better than even the best human memories. So uh, so it all works. OK, but but learning an instrument later in life, I've I've heard from many people can is is easier than when they tried the first time. Oh, that's um, good to know. I learned guitar 10 years ago, maybe. Hmm. Um, but I've been playing drums and piano since I was like 13 or something. Yeah, so yeah. it's different. But yeah. Yeah. But you know, left, it's interesting. Go ahead. Being left handed, I think, is a benefit to oh. learning guitar because you can look across at someone that is playing and they are the mirror image of you, which is actually oh, what you yeah, want. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, you're not you know, I would translate. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. I, I, speaking of translate, I was thinking like uh, trying to learn a new language, right, is I think similar to learning an instrument because you've got to learn a, a language, yeah. right? So I'm looking at, I, I, I heard this podcast and the guy who invented the CAPTCHA and the ReCAPTCHA, which yeah. I don't know, yeah. we all, uh, for one of my businesses can be the bane of my existence. Uh, but, you know, I listened to a podcast where he talked about how they developed the CAPTCHA and how they turned it into a learning tool, right? And it was teaching these computers, oh, that's a bus or that's a stoplight or that's a this, you know, there was four things you had to click and on, the computer only knew that three of them is a crosswalk. Oh, isn't that And the fourth one you clicked, you were training the computer. So that's why Google bought them for, you know, a gazillion dollars because they figured this out. So he's now started another company called Duolingo, which is- Oh, yeah. Doing the same for teaching you how to learn another language. But you're actually you're teaching the computer in the process. Yes, you are. But then I heard this morning the new, you know, basically it's Babelfish, right? You, real time translation oh, yeah. as you speak. And it, and I heard the, the, the new Google thing that they released today. And I was like, oh, this translation businesses or we're not going to have to learn different languages no. in the future. No, because you will speak it and someone will hear whatever they need to hear in real time, in your tone of voice. And it, it is absolutely going to change the world uh, th as we know it. Uh, I agree. I've, I've experienced yeah, some of these things at, at CES. They're not in your yeah. voice, but they are, you know, that's, a, yeah, that's what they released today. Yeah, it I know. It uses your, God, it's crazy. Yep. Yeah. It's crazy. Anyway. Kind of cool, but, uh, so but that's I not have, what we're here to talk about. No, I have a couple of things. We'll start with one. We'll see yes. if we get to the second. Um, Let's do it. it with uh, the business related. I, I always, as I'm sure all of you do, um, 
when you see a business doing something, you either, you know, often will say, wow, that's great. What a brilliant idea. Or how did they screw this up so much? Right. Like, you know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I have I, I ran into a, an experience over the last week or two here that really kind of epitomizes this. Uh, it's a company called Hopsy. Now, oh. listeners to this show that have been listeners for more than about six months might know about Hopsy because they were a sponsor of ours. Hopsy uh, had they sort of aggregated all this stuff together. They they sold you and us a, uh, a, a, a like a mini keg and or right. a, a mini a mini refrigerator with a tap on it, really. And then yeah. and then their business was it and is selling these small little kegs that are what about four beers worth of uh, uh, yeah four or five tor- they call them torpedoes torpedoes Torps. yeah exactly yeah. these little things yeah. you put it in and it's instant right you know you've got beer on tap yeah. and and you're good on, to go. your, on your countertop yeah on it's cool. your countertop right it's great and uh, and so they, they have a subscription model right where every month. You, uh, if assuming you sub- you continue to subscribe and pay, they send you four or six or eight, depending on what your level of subscription is, of these torpedoes, and you can pick yeah. what you want. You get an email though, and and this is getting to my point here. Yeah, you you get an email, and the email says, "Okay, here's what we've chosen to ship you based on your generic preferences." Okay. Uh, I like this kind of beer or whatever. Yeah, right. right. Okay. Here's yeah. the four that we are going to ship you. You have 24 hours to speak or receive this shipment. And and you can speak and say oh. delay for a month. Or you can also speak and say, hey, I, I want two of those. But the other two, hmm, no. And okay. so give me, you know, give me these instead. And you can go pick from their menu and it's totally fine. As long as you do it within 24 hours of, of when you get the email, you're totally good. So great. Fine. And then it shows up. Yeah, they have to ship alcohol, though, and they're shipping oh. it locally, relatively ground yes. shipping is seems to be how they do it. And they, um, they, you know, so they have different distribution centers all over the country. And yeah. and your beer, alcohol tricky. tricky. Yeah. And your beer yeah. selection is localized to your distribution center. So you in California would get different options than I would get, say, here in New Hampshire, because ours came from New York. Fine. Okay. No problem. So I stayed on this subscription plan and really what I was doing was I was oh. deferring every other month. So I, I would get it and then I would, you know, have I would have enough. I don't drink a ton or whatever. So, you know, like, oh, no, I still have some. So I defer a month. Well, okay. May came. I had received a shipment in April and my date was about the 10th of the month when I would get this like notice like 24 hours or you just bought four torpedoes worth. And I realized last week, I'm like, I haven't heard from them. Like, Hmm. and that's weird. So I searched my email, of course, and nothing. And I go and log into my account. It says, oh, your account's on hold until July. Like, well, why is that? Okay. Hmm. I didn't, I know I didn't put it on hold. Right. Okay. I know the last thing I did with them was accept April's shipment. So I didn't even skip a month. It wasn't even like they implied that I wanted more or more of a delay. So I'm like, okay, well, Memorial Day weekend's coming up. We've got some people coming over to the house. I actually do want to order more. So I put some things in my cart and I go to 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 the cart to check out. And I get this very generic, like non-stylized, no HTML text page that says, we don't ship to your area. Oh. And I'm like. They, what, do they lose their distributors? So I dug into this and I talked <laughs> with them. And they're like, oh, yeah. You know, I sent them a customer thing through their support. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, that the shutdown of DICOM really hit us hard. DICOM, D-I-C-O-M, is owned by Eastern Shipments or something. They are were the provider that they use to do these, these oh. shipments, at least here in the Northeast. Eastern Supply or Eastern whatever they were bought DICOM five or six years ago and were using them. And then they just shut down at the end of April. And, wow. and so... Hopsy uh, doesn't seem to be able to get anyone else to ship their beer. Now, you and I, I mean, you've done way more with shipping than I have, but I guarantee you there's somebody out there that would like this business. Now, maybe not at Hopsy's prices or anything Ah, like that. But um, so first of all, you know, there's there's a couple of lessons here. So number one, we'll stick with where we are. You don't want to run your business with a key component of it, i.e. the ability to ship as a linchpin without at least exploring a backup option. Yeah, you need a backup. 
You know, and, like, uh, yeah, like for sure. We host our sites. We have a company called Servant that was just acquired by LeaseWeb. And that's where we've hosted for the last 15 years. It's really easy for me to get comfortable with. They will exist forever. I never I don't need to worry oh, yeah. about it. Well, yeah. I keep, you know, I keep my toes in the water of the, the hosting business for two reasons. Number one, I know they will go away someday. It's just a matter of when and will it affect me or will I be out of this business by that point? Like which one of us gets out first is really the, you know, the question. And and then also, am I getting screwed on pricing? You know, and and so I keep my eyes open. And you know, we have Linode on as a sponsor. They were a sponsor of the last episode, and I've researched them, and they're a fine company. And I actually have even considered moving all of our hosting to them. Although moving your hosting is a disaster, so you know, like you don't necessarily want to go through the pain of moving it. But that's that's just because you've got things configured the way you want. And you want to leave yeah. them. Alone. Um, but uh, but sometimes it's worth it. But I at least know. That if servant were to shut down, like I could, it would, it would be a, a week of yeah. pain, but I would have an alternative. And if you can't find an alternative for the, for one of the many things that you rely on, one of the many service providers you rely on, then you need to probably create one. Uh, yeah, if you want so. to stay in business, like you, you can't just assume that there will always be someone to solve that problem for you unless there's a market full of people that are there to solve that problem for you. Like you, you need to see it. Yeah. 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 And, and we talk all the time about being optimistic and how, you know, creating your own reality and that kind of thing. But there is some limits uh, and you need to think about the options. And, y you know, you're right having the backup. But the thing I was struck by, I, I, I have a few comments about about Hopsy. Um, I'm a big fan of beer and I love their concept. Um, but it seems like they really fell down in the customer service side of things as well. Well, that's the second not, part. Yeah. yeah. Why, why? I mean, they email me all the time. Yeah. Why are you reaching out to have them tell you this versus them crafting a, a story, yes. if you will, uh, based in truth, but you know, Hey folks, this is what we encountered, yada, yada, yada. We're working on this. We've put a coupon in your account. As soon as we get, everybody's going to get a free torpedo, whatever. Whatever it is. But, but oh. now how many, you know, uh, pissed off people on the East Coast uh, are, you know, not getting their beer? Yeah. That's yeah. bad. That's bad. Well, and, and it's and, not, you know. and it's like, I own, I now have this, you know, this, this, this refrigerated thing yeah. with, with the tap on it. That I can, like, I as a consumer have no option to get these torpedoes from anyone else. I'm not sure that's true. I've looked. Now, I have you looked? looked you couldn't find them? I looked uh, about yeah, a month yeah. and a half ago uh, just to see if I could, you know, is there better pricing, different options, etc. No. Now, it's Krupp's that it's makes interesting. The, yeah. the thing. So you'd think that somebody would, you know, it's, it's not Hopsy's the only one, but. Maybe they were or are. Maybe they've got some some. I mean, maybe there's something patentable about the way the torpedo works. And so, you know, Krebs <laughs> has given Hopsy a license and no one else. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I just uh, we'll put a link in the uh, okay. uh, show notes, but you can take a look. I don't, I don't know anything about them, but sure. the, the sub, they call it the sub. Yeah, the sub and, is and, the and item. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you take a look and see whether you can get those torps from this uh, okay. this company. Right. Uh, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's in the U.S. I don't know how to, sure. you know how, how it goes. Sure. But but it, you know the then the thing about I, I think one of the the indicators that perhaps they were going to have trouble. And I love the concept. I mean, who who doesn't like fresh beer? And I thought the price points were were pretty good if you really priced out yep. the quality of beer you were getting. Right. It, 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 you were getting local micro brews. On tap, you didn't have to go buy it. Like I have a kegerator, which has two uh, mini kegs in it, five five gallons. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, that's fifty beers. Uh, oh, or yeah, no, that's 20, a lot yeah, of beer. Twenty five. It's a lot of beer. So you have to be careful about what you pick because you're going. Like we just put the kegs in for our summer social season. We like to call it. Sure. Uh, and and the kegerator's out by the pool, and so we're getting ready. And but you have to be careful. Okay, we want this beer and this beer, cause you're going to have it for a month or two. Right. Cause I mean, I don't drink that much beer. Right. But so when they came to approach us, I was like, Oh, this is awesome. Here's a product I'll totally use. And we got to try it out, which is great. And they gave us a promotion, uh, for our listeners, which is awesome. Gives a discount on this. But during the time we were running that promotion, they introduced another promotion 
that I think undercut the promotion that we were promoting. <laughs> yeah, and, and many of you pointed that out to us. Yeah, like, hey, folks, I can buy this for X, you know, less than what you guys yeah, are. Yeah, I think, I think ours is, right? was, yeah, our deal was 99 bucks for, you know, yeah. two beers, two glasses, and a, and a sub, which is a good yeah. deal. But it is a good were, deal. Then they were offering it for 79 and I think 70, even 69 yeah. Yeah. It's like, And you yep. folks are smart. Like, you like. Yeah. You listen to this show because you're astute people. And yes, you, you pointed are. out to us, we would love to support you. But, you know, 20 bucks is yeah. 20 bucks. We- and, and we don't want to just spout off the sponsor spots. I mean, we're not we don't do this show to make money. Right. right. We do give, give small business community. Sponsors are great. Helps us, you know, cover some costs, keep the lights on. And it's a great metric. Uh, we talk about it a lot. It is. Even small amounts of money each month can help motivate you to do better. Yeah, right? we don't and, do uh, it. Like know. we don't, I, I, I want to, if, if I may, at least speaking for myself, I don't want to say that I don't do it for the money. It, I don't rely on the money from this particular show yeah, to support there we go. my family or, or anything that, thank, that is, thank goodness. <laughs> right. No, that is that anything that is, is like fundamentally important to, to my quality of life. That Correct. said, the money actually does and, and the, the attraction of sponsors and the success of our sponsors and all of that, each of them are, to your point, metrics that keep me engaged. It's like oh. engagement. And, yeah, and I love that. It's the same like yeah. from you folks, like the emails that we get from you are part oh, of yeah. that list. Right. But seeing cash, I mean, you know, we're small business people seeing cash, even if it's small, come in, shows us that, yes, this is a viable thing. And we can do more with it. Like there is, there yeah, is something it. that happens. So, so in that sense, yes, I do do it for the money. And, and then of course I have a much larger business, uh, back yeah. media where we literally do this for the money. And that is material to the foundation of our, you know, our livelihood and all that stuff. So, yep. so it, it really, yes, we do it Eloquent, for the money. eloquently said, yeah, that, that, yeah. that makes, yeah. that's well, well said yeah. for sure. Yeah. For sure. But, 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 you know, so yeah, that, that, the concept of us, pitching, you know, giving this promotion out and then having them go, it, it, it reeks of desperation in my mind or disconnect. It may be you know, a lack yeah. of communication between one division that's trying to promote the service on, on the podcast, uh, different podcasts and the other marketing department, just trying to, we need more subscriptions. We need more subscriptions. Let's do and more I think deals. You know? I, based so. on what I understand, I think it was the latter. I, I think yeah. it was, well, let's just try everything. You know, we have this opportunity. Yeah. Let's just go throw it all against the wall and yeah. see what sticks. And, and, and you know what? I, I don't know that I would fault them for that, yeah, but, it's, it's but, you know, coming to us and saying, oh, we're not getting a lot of performance. Can you do more for us? It's like, well, we could, but our listeners are smart enough to know that they're, they've got a better option regardless of how many times we tell them about ours. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. That, so, yes. and, and that conversation actually happens. So you folks know, like we do go to bat for you on these sorts of things. Like, you know, we, we were not here to, to, it, as I always say, and I say, you know, there are times when, uh, especially with what we do with Backbeat Media, you know, we uh, obviously we're, we're in the customer service business because that's every business. And we want to keep all our sponsors happy, but we also want to keep our shows happy. And for yeah, for this, the way you keep a show happy is you keep the listeners happy, because if there are no listeners, then it doesn't matter about the sponsors. Right. Like there's no yeah, sponsors to worry about keeping happy. So it truly does start and end with keeping our listeners happy and serving our listeners. So it, we did, we went to bat for you guys. It was, but it was an interesting, like seeing all of this now from, you know, the perspective that we, that we have of time and all of this, it's like, okay, so they weren't, there's a lot of disconnects that happened within that business. And it, it, it is interesting to do a little, you know, 15 minute case study on. So, so there yeah, it go. is. Yeah. yeah. No, it's cool. Yeah. It's good stuff. I have another case study I want to do about the New York Times, you know, but but okay. um, but I first want to talk about our two sponsors. Speaking if, of sponsors. Speaking yeah. of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And our first sponsor today is Text Expander, one of our favorite apps slash services. Yup. It the way Text Expander makes my personal and business life better is something that I, it, I cannot overstate. Like it's impossible I, because of how much time and really just how much brain space it saves me because 
I have all of these things that I need to type regularly. Uh, addresses, can, canned responses is the wrong thing, although that's what happens. Responses to, to emails that are the same over and over again, right? People asking the same question. What are your prices? How does this work? How, how do, what do I need for my talking points for the podcast? Like these things that, that are just materially recurring in our business, we need to tell people and we need to tell them in an efficient way in an accurate way. And when, when those two things have to come together, they can often be very timely to sit down and craft a response. That's both efficient and accurate, right? You want someone to understand what you're telling them, but you also want them to bother to take the time to read it. And if it's five pages long, you know, that's not as good as say five paragraphs or five sentences. So you spend the time, you whittle it down and then what do you do? You send the email. The next time, what do you do? You go into your sent box, you copy it from the last one, you paste it. And that's fraught with all kinds of, well, inefficiencies, quite frankly. That's where Text Expander comes in, because what you do is you put it into Text Expander. And then the next time you need it, you just either with a click of a mouse or you type a, a shortcut and it expands Text Expander into your pre-crafted, pre-vetted, pre created response and the beauty of it is you don't have to read it you know what it says so even if it is five paragraphs long you say you know hey tim thanks so much for emailing you invoke your response thanks so much and boom you sent it and it literally takes that long right so something that's five paragraphs long very fundamentally important to your business you've now done in five seconds and you know it's right this is what Text Expander does for you. You got to check it out. Visit textexpander.com slash podcast. Show listeners get 20% off your first year. You'll choose small business show from the list of ask, what they'll ask you. And then you get 20% off your first year. Our thanks to Text Expander for sponsoring this episode. So cool. Yeah, for sure, man. Our, Couldn't live without it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Our second sponsor today is the Alternative Board. You know, Owning your own business, it's a major accomplishment, right? It takes a lot of hard work, takes a lot of dedication, and you've done that. But taking your business to the next level is often really difficult and requires help. And help is something that we small business owners often don't even know we need. And once we know we need it, we don't know where to get it. And that's why you need the alternative board or TAB, a group of business owners and experts in your area that can that you can turn to for valuable advice on growing your business, right? Tab's been helping owners and CEOs of privately held businesses for like 30 years with their business owner advisory needs. The way it works is each board is made up of 10 local non-competing business leaders. And you meet together for four hours a month to discuss all your relevant business issues and opportunities. And you help each other out with things like sales and marketing, hiring, training, operations. You support each other. They're your alternative board, right? That's why it's the alternative board.com slash SBS. You get help building actionable strategic plans for your businesses. You get feedback. You get to take these four hours and instead of working in your business, you're working on your business. And in addition, you get one on one business coaching in between your meetings. Having a tab membership can make a huge difference for you and your business. And members report they get better work life balance, greater ability to deal with day to day operations because you're taking that time and taking a breath and looking at things. So get the help that you need to take your business to the next level. Apply for free today, free today to find out if there's a board seat available in your area. Go to the alternative board dot com slash SBS. That's the alternative board dot com slash SBS. Our thanks to the Alternative Board for sponsoring this episode. All right. Awesome. So I got another thing, Shannon. Okay, what's up? It's the New York Times. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. But I'm a publisher too, right? You are too, right? We're all publishers. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So the New York Times recently started a podcast called The Daily, Monday through Friday, about 20 minutes, and they focus on one, maybe two issues of the day. Really well done. And it's super handy. They... They really distill things down. 
I've never caught them like being uh, reporting with a political bent or anything like they just different topics. I mean, politics or business or whatever, politics, business, whatever's happening in the world. Michael Jackson, that movie about Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. They dug into that that. a little bit too. Okay. Time. Yeah. They've talked about, you know, the the Trump's uh, tariffs. They talked about Uh the uh, abortion thing in uh, in Alabama. Right. I mean, everything like whatever's happening. They talk about it. It's great. And it's nice because it's 20 minutes. I've been listening on and off for a little while. I don't listen every day, but when I'm driving in the car, 20 minutes can be a great little thing, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so I noticed they started doing something new and they have ads in the show. That's fine. Uh, they don't do their ads like we just did where it's host read. They do can spots, but they make it work really well. Like it, actually listening okay. to that show convinced me that maybe can spots would actually work for some of the shows we rep. Right. So, sure. yeah. So really well done. But they started doing this other thing where they have one of the producers of the show come on and say, hey, you know, my name is is Alice. And I and they'll tell some story about how they had some topic they wanted to to, you know, report on or were asked to report on. It took a lot of hard work and they were given the flexibility and the freedom to do this and do it the right way. And then they were able to bring it to the daily. And they said uh, and they and they always end it by saying, so, you know, if you want to support all this hard work that goes into the daily, do it by subscribing to The New York Times. Now, oh, right. Here's the problem. Hmm. I know as a publisher and and and, you know, we started on the Web with Mac Observer and then we started Mac Geek Gab, which is a podcast, obviously, maybe not. Obviously, it is. We answer people's questions on that show. So people find it valuable and they like they we answer people's tech questions for those of us old enough to get the reference. It's like car talk for Apple users. Okay, And we ran into something that I think is what The New York Times ran into, where the people that are listening to the podcast want to find a way to say thank you with their wallets right sure and and we've we found this at mac geek Gab too like people would get creative they would send us amazon gift cards to like our feedback address there here it's feedback at business show.co i'm just saying uh but you know we'd get like these things and it was really nice but it was obvious we had to do something to to that th- th- well we didn't have to but that there was this desire out there to help us and if we just tugged on the thread a little bit uh, there might actually be something there. And it turns out there was, we built our own uh, in the hidden, you know, I've, I've said, I always build things for myself that I should have then marketed before Patreon existed. We c- completely built our own essentially, you know, Patreon type system. And that's what we still have today. And it works great. Um, and our listeners support us there. It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. That's yeah. great. The New York times clearly, in my opinion, clearly had indicators that there were people that wanted to send them money for the daily. And in but I think they made a mistake instead of embracing that the audience for the daily is different than the audience for for the New York Times. They said just, oh, you know what? We're not going to invent anything new for you daily listeners. Just go send your money over there. Now, the problem is when you go send your money over there, you get something you don't want. Now, you might not get a paper copy. You might subscribe digitally or whatever. So at least they're not shipping you something you don't want. But still, you're you're not getting anything. You're not even getting the warm, fuzzy feeling that you would get from supporting your favorite podcasters because they're telling you, oh, just go send your money into that big bucket over there. Yeah, Uh, they really like if they opened up a here's how to donate to the daily section. I think they would get more money. I get why The New York Times doesn't want to have anything to do with the word donation. Uh, so they've got to be a little more creative than that and maybe offer something a little different. Send people, tell people, look, you know, subscribe, pay 10 bucks a month. And for every hundred bucks, you get a T-shirt or something like like that kind of system. The, you know, the NPR, PBS yeah. you know, type of thing, like anything. But but this current solution is not a good solution, I don't think. Well, and I, I would uh, argue that certainly the sponsor spots on a podcast run by the New York times uh, is generating, you know, some significant significant revenue. revenue, Yes. Right. Uh, Sure. And so, yeah, I don't think they're having trouble supporting the daily. Yeah. It's yeah. So the way that they phrase it, and I know they want to sell subscriptions, I get it. Yeah. But like to your point, uh, you're, you're, uh, 
talking to the wrong demographic. I don't um, think those people want subscriptions no. to the New York Times. No, they want to listen to you. Like you said, when you're in the car, I had to drive up to our, our river house this last weekend and do, do a bunch of work. And I'm in the car, you know, it's a four hour drive. All I did was listen to podcasts. Uh, right. You know, the last thing I want to do is, oh, I gotta, I'm going to read another thing and that I, you know, uh, you know that I just don't have time for. Right. So the, the the it goes kind of against the whole concept of uh, of it. Now, and there's other ways to do it. I, I listen to a podcast that I just love. Uh, it's called How I Built This, and it's right. an NPR podcast with Guy Raz, and he has some great founders on there. And every Sunday, what they've done to to build an ecosystem and generate uh, significant amounts of revenue is they've taken it from the podcast to started hosting conferences, how I built this sure. conference. Right. Totally yeah, makes course. sense, right? Of course. You're going to get, the people want to come. They've heard these people talk. They'll get a chance to come listen to them in person. There'll be some breakout sessions. So that I get, that's expanding this uh, interactivity, okay. right? Exactly. Well, and it's leveraging yeah. the relationship yeah. that yeah, the yeah. listeners have with with the hosts. I, I mean, yep. and we're aware of this. Yes, like, exactly. We know that you know us better than we know you. And and it's it's OK. Right. Like if yeah. I went into a listener of the small business show, it's it's funny it, w- when it happens at first. I'm fair. I'm used to it now. I still love it. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not being dismissive yes. of this. But the first couple of times that someone essentially started a conversation with me mid conversation was it like it was it was sort of bizarre. It was like, whoa. Oh, right. You're. In your brain, we've already been having this conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And That's so it's, awesome. it's okay for you to, to to dispense with the pleasantries and also dispense with the introduction to the topic and just get right into the meat of it. It's like, whoa. And now I'm used to it and I love it. It's very efficient, actually. It's, it's you know, it's talking to a podcast listener for the first time yeah. is, is way more engaging for me than talking to someone I've just, that, that, We've we don't know of each other. Neither one of us knows of each other. Right. It's because sure. it's like we we get a like I can go deep with somebody all of a sudden. It's like, oh, wow, we're, we're here. Great. Cool. Like, I feel like I've known you for 20 years. This is awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But it, yeah, I think there's more creative ways to do it than yeah. uh, than they're than they're doing it. And, you know, hopefully when you let them know we discussed uh, on their show, they'll take some tips and, uh, you know, I learn so. from the learn from the small guys. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can learn from everyone. Right. Yeah, even, absolutely. Even absolutely. people that especially people that know less than you. Uh, yeah, oh, of course. I of course. have found. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, everybody is an expert at something. And, uh, you know, the older I get, the more I, you know, try to open myself up to be like, oh, I just got to sit here and be quiet, which is hard for me. <laughs> As you know, I, I do know. <laughs> yeah. Our listeners know. Too. Love, yeah. 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 We love talking about it. That's a good that's a good thing. But, you know, uh, and some great feedback today. I hope the Hopsy people get things figured out. And, I do, too. Uh, I like the beer. Yeah. And yeah, this yeah, this um, sub the sub thing is only available. No, in I saw that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're moving. Europe, we're though. moving, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, thanks for listening. We'd love to hear your feedback on uh, what we're doing, what you'd like us to talk about, problems you may be having that uh, you'd like some, you know, information from us on or uh, solutions that you've heard uh, you can solve some of our problems. That's feedback, right. Yeah. Feedback at businessshow.co or come Wait, visit did you us. Say feedback at businessshow.co. I did. Oh, that's awesome. I think that's what I said. That, yeah. that is what you said. No, that's good. that's where good, we good. would love to hear from you folks. We really do. It's uh, even yeah. if you're just saying hi, it like it fuels us. Please I, do. I know we said it earlier in the episode, but it's totally true. It's part of the fuel. It, it really it means it. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks to all of you for listening. Thanks to all of you for your feedback. Thanks to our sponsors, of course, textexpander.com slash podcast, the alternative board.com slash SBS. Businessshow.co slash Facebook. Can all lead the charmed life together? 